I am Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. This video is 10th video in the 30 days of Databricks series. As you can see here, the last one was how you can run widgets in SQL Notebook. So I highly recommend if you are completely new to follow all the other videos as we proceed. But if you know already something related to Databricks, then feel free to just jump into this notebook. First, I will just show you how you can run the things that I have written in one notebook from another notebook and later on I will also show you let's say that you have widget in one notebook and how you can run that and from another notebook also passing the parameters of that widgets let's get started I am on the notebook one as you can see here first thing first why I told you to watch my previous video is you need to know some practicalities that is that how to create the cluster and what are the different things right first you need to create a cluster and then attach the cluster into the notebook so that we can run this notebook i have attached the cluster here now i can run the notebook shift enter and shift enter so dbutils.help is just the command that we can use to get instructions okay what is dbutils and what are the different things or utilities that we can pass using dbutils as you can see it has provided many things but this video we are focusing on this notebook part here if you want to know more things about that notebook i have already run the cell so i'm not going to run again so dbutils.notebook.help it has exit as well as run right so what is exit this method lets you exit a notebook with a value it's simple right and the path meaning that this method runs a notebook and return its exit value the de description is quite self-explanatory here there are actually two different things percentage run command as well as dbutils.notebook.run you will know this as i go through the notebook so the notebook one i have just one command here called print hello world as it prints if you do shift enter it prints hello world how to now run the notebook one from another notebook i have written here notebook two i can click this and open in the new tab as i said you we can use percentage run to run this notebook so what i can do first you need to attach the cluster attaching the cluster part is now successfully done now you can just provide percentage run and the path to notebook one so it is on the same folder right if, how to get the path if you go to this notebook one right click and there is copy file path you can click this copy file path go to notebook two and percentage run right i can just run it let's say percentage run and paste that you don't need to provide all these things you can just provide percentage dot means current directory you can run this way or this way let's say that i want to run from the first one so if i run this as you can see here it prints all the things that is mentioned in another notebook right run one notebook from another we use percentage run this and hello world if i go to notebook one so these are the things which is mentioned here right this is the same thing but now it is printed from notebook two just to demonstrate you can use the same another method also meaning that with the full path if you do shift enter it is going to run the same thing right so either way you need to know what is the path of that particular notebook right next thing is now let's say that you want to create a function in notebook one and you want to run that function into another notebook right how can we do that I can create a function here what does this function does this is just the reverse function reverse the input string yes and return the reverse string normal function I can run this function now right when I run this function now here I can use this function now in another notebook let me show you the function name is reverse right now if I go to notebook 2 and if I go down here and just run reverse and if i let's say pass apple just example i want to get the reverse it shows error because reverse is not defined but if you run the notebook now let's say that we use this method or let me 
actually delete this there is only one method right let me run this now so i'm running notebook one again if i run this everything is now run from another notebook where i have all the information meaning that it grabs this function also from notebook one now if i go to notebook two i don't need to import that uh, function i can just provide reverse and pass anything i want right let's say that i just say a reverse apple as you can see here, it reversed the things. It imported everything from notebook one so that we can provide the value directly in notebook two. I hope you get the idea how it works now. Next thing now, let's go to the widgets part, right? I will go again to the main notebook. I have notebook three and notebook four for that demonstration purpose. Let me open notebook three here in a new tab, right? here i have notebook three run one notebook from another so i hope you have heard the name parameterizing notebook parameterized notebook right these are the fancy way of saying but the main thing here is allowing users to pass parameters or arguments to the notebook when it is executed enabling dynamic and flexible control over its behavior without modifying the code directly when I run this, you will get the idea. So I'm not going to run these two shells again because this is the same thing I provided, right? Let's say that I want to create a widget. I hope you know widgets. If not, I recommend you to watch here. I have created videos where you can create widgets in Python notebook as well as SQL notebook, right? Let me go to notebook three. So here I'm creating the widget, but first always remember to attach the cluster. If not, it will of course ask you to attach the cluster if i run shift enter it says okay attached cluster is terminated do you want to attach yes select resource these 30 days of data bricks i said okay now the cluster is being attached if you have many clusters you can choose the one that you want to attach the cluster okay now it says data bricks as you can see here there is a new widget being created here dbutils.widgets.text widget and I am passing the default value Databricks, right? And this is the name and this is the label. Here is the label, text label Databricks and I am getting the value from this particular notebook. This is fine. We get the value from here. What next, right? If I now open the notebook four, let me open in the new tab. Here, what I am doing is, as you can see here, I'm saying dbutils.notebook.run and I want to run the notebook in the current path that is notebook three. And this is the 60 meaning what is this? If you want to know, let me just go here. 30 days of Databricks. One good part if you want to know the documentation is always use this particular commands dbutils.notebook.run and pass two question marks. If I run this, it is going to provide me the documentation. What is this? This is the path, right? I am providing the path here. And this is the timeout seconds, right? I'm just passing 60 seconds, right? What happens if I run this? Let me show you. If I run this, it says here the requirement failed to enable notebook workflows. Please upgrade your Databricks subscription. I want to show you this also because some of you might be running some example codes somewhere you find it in the community edition of Databricks. In community edition of Databricks, dbutils.notebook.run is not possible and because it creates a workflow and if you go to this tab i will just make this bigger expand there is this workflows if you click this one it says here that you need to upgrade in order to use this workflow right that is the reason it is showing us the error that okay we cannot use that so how to run now if i run the same thing also so text filter pi spark what I'm doing here is again here, there are some arguments that I'm providing, right? That is how we can get. If I run this also, it will show the same error because this is the same command I'm using here, which is not supported in free edition, meaning the community edition of Databricks. I hope you know that. Now, what is the solution? We can use the percentage run command. Let me just uncomment this see the documentation how i can use that percentage run command right so here it says run the named file inside ipython as a program percentage run there are different commands and we can run the file i can use percentage run dot notebook 3 that is what we used in 
notebook two also right if you remember we use percentage run dot notebook one it prints notebook one if i go now to notebook four we use the same thing but let's see what happens if i just run this so if i just run this it says okay as you can see here it prints everything that is in notebook three right because i have notebook three here and as you can see here it provided all the information till data bricks because this is the same thing that is being provided here right but this is just the normal things that it provided from uh, notebook 3 but how can we parameterize that notebook that is the next part now so let's say that i want to provide percentage run dot dot or that that means the current directory slash notebook 3 and this is how you can provide the widgets i'm using uh, dollar sign text filter and pi spark meaning that instead of data bricks i want to provide different value meaning that pi spark right i can just change here but that is not the way right i want to parameterize the notebook meaning that i can run one notebook from another and also provide value as i want right when you start working with data bricks you will know why this is uh, important because when you create the workflows you need to provide different values it will be like okay that is how it works kind of scenario when you start working but let's say that if i run this what happens if i run this all the things are going to run because that is the uh, markdown so it will run right this is that this is running here this is running here but here as you can see here it takes the value of pi spark right but if i go to notebook 3 and yeah it's already here but just to show you if i just paste it here it will show me databricks right because here is databricks but the same value which is in notebook 3 is replaced in notebook 4 with PySpark. that is what we call parameterizing the notebook in a fancy term right one more thing is in the beginning i showed you that there is the exit command also right so what does this exit command do and how to run this let me also demonstrate that let's say that i want to go to notebook 2 right i have this reverse reverse function being used here but if i go to notebook 1 and before this uh, reverse function i will create a new shell here and i will paste something called dbutils.notebook.exit do not run the following shell this is just the normal things we we must pass into the exit command but what happens if i run this it is just saying no, do not run the following shell but what happens here is if i run this notebook now from another notebook all the commands below this particular shell will not run just to demonstrate that let me go to notebook 2 i have already uh, attached the cluster so what i do first is go here and what i will do detach and reattach meaning that all the variables will be lost right so what happens if i run this now if i run this it will not run because we haven't imported that particular thing right reverse is not defined but i have notebook one everything is here let me run notebook one from notebook two again right so let's say that i, I run this so if i run this it just say that okay hello world notebook exited do not run the following cell it printed what it is in notebook one but as i demonstrated you before when i run one notebook for another one it should also get the reverse com reverse uh, function and we were able to use it there but now if i go to notebook 2 and if i run this it is not there meaning that if you want to parameterize the notebook and if you don't want other things to run after that particular cell you can use the exit command so that after that the sales will not be imported in the next notebook there are many use cases but in the beginner level let's just uh, learn what i just mentioned in this video now in the future when you start using databricks in your use cases you will know in depth how you can use these things i hope you learned something new today uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video